Introduction Dave's Story Dave reached out to me a week before our first scheduled Skype conversation. He found my website, dadstartingover.com. He read all of my posts. He listened to all the podcast episodes. He bought my books. And he was now ready to take things to the next level. He wanted to have a real one-on-one chat with yours truly. I'm flattered, maybe even a little embarrassed by his glowing emails to me. My work has obviously struck a nerve with Dave. He truly thought he was completely alone in this god-awful life situation he finds himself in. He felt helpless and more than a little afraid for what else life had in store for him after his marriage ended so abruptly. Thanks to one fateful late-night Google search, Dave discovered that there was a website out there completely devoted to men in situations exactly like his. This was both a relief and an exciting discovery for him. As he saw it, somebody out there had a treasure map that would lead him to the end of his suffering, and he was determined to follow it step by step, come hell or high water. Dave was also manic in his newfound energy. For men that have been given an unexpected glimpse into the chaos and awfulness that life can sometimes dish out, hope can be a very intoxicating thing, as I have come to learn over the years. Dave is like a lot of men that pay me to chat with them. What was once a teary-eyed Google search at 2 in the morning is now a full-blown obsession. He is trying desperately to prevent the damaged cruise ship of his life from sinking to the bottom of the Atlantic. I get it. Been there, done that. Dave is determined to figure out exactly what went wrong in his life and how he can turn things around. The more he tells me about his life, the more that the ill-fated Titanic metaphor seems appropriate. For years, he saw dozens of icebergs in the water, and he willfully ignored them all. And yet... He just can't figure out why he's suddenly taking on so much water. In his mind, he just doesn't deserve the awfulness of dealing with a wife who one day said, You know, I love you, but I'm just not in love with you anymore. I just don't feel like I used to. I'm sorry. Dave, like most men who hear some variation of those fateful words, would later uncover his wife's infidelity. He was beyond crushed. The entirety of Dave's world was turned upside down. What was once comfortable and familiar is now scary and chaotic. He wants desperately to regain a sense of control over his life. He needs to gain control over his life. If not, the world as he knows it just became a very scary and chaotic place. He will be the first to admit that he doesn't have the coping skills and mental framework necessary to navigate such an awful and unexpected set of circumstances. As Dave tells me his story, he does what all men in his shoes do he skips right over the most important piece of the how-did-this-happen puzzle. He jumps past the actual cause of the problem and goes right to what is front and center, his suffering. Quote, She just told me that she doesn't have feelings for me. Just like that. We came back from taking our youngest kid to the zoo. We put him to bed. She walks into the bedroom and then she says, We both know this isn't working anymore. I had no idea. Seriously. I've looked back on our years of marriage and I don't see what happened. Yes, we fought like anybody else, but nothing that bad. I was a really good husband to her. Eighteen years of marriage and two kids mean nothing to her. Nothing. She told me we were over just like she was talking about the weather. I don't understand how somebody can be so cold and so cruel. The exact same shit happened to my brother, too. Last year, his wife left him and screwed around with a guy from her office. He told me that all women are like this, but I didn't want to believe him. Now I see that I'm the stupid one. I'm never going through this shit again. What's the point of marriage? Why would any man do this again? I stop Dave's current train of thought and turn things in a new direction. Before we go down the road of marriage, cheating, etc., tell me about your wife. What was her life like before meeting you? How about her childhood? Dave laughs. Oh man, you just had to go there, didn't you? Yeah, her family is a wreck. Her mom married four times. Four times. She cheated on two of them. One died of a heart attack, and the other one she's still with, but she treats him like shit. I don't know why she keeps getting married. She has a problem with men and keeping them around. My wife's biological dad was her mom's second husband. He's a pretty good guy. We don't talk to him much. Just around holidays, mostly. He seems perfectly normal, but just not that close with my wife for whatever reason. My wife, Maggie, had a big falling out with her mom and stepdad, and she ran away when she was 16. She got into drugs and stuff. Lived on the streets. She had a kid when she was 19 by some abusive asshole. 
She left him and completely turned her life around. She went back to school and became a nurse. She was one of the nurses I saw when I went to the hospital for my broken collarbone. We became good friends and started dating not too long after we met. Me. Wow, that's some story. How long did you date before getting married? Dave. Maggie and her daughter moved into my place after about four months of dating. We got married about a month after that in Vegas. It's safe to say that Dave's early relationship story is riddled with what we call red flags. He had many warnings that said his new nurse girlfriend may not be the best wife candidate. But like many men in Dave's shoes, he looked past the negative baggage she brought to the relationship table and he saw her for what she was now, a strong woman that overcame her negative past and made something positive of herself. In Dave's mind, the negative baggage was completely cleaned off the table and all that was left was a beautiful and strong woman worthy of the praise, benefit of the doubt, an unhealthy worship that he heaped on her for the next 18 years of marriage. Dave was right, but he was also wrong. Yes, Maggie's ability to overcome her past was indeed worthy of praise and respect, but her courage and hard work didn't absolve her from any further wrongdoing, nor do her achievements negate the negative effects her emotional baggage will have on her ability to form healthy, long-term relationships. In short, Maggie was a ticking time bomb. She could have been a fantastic partner to grow with and learn from for decades, but she didn't do the hard work needed to keep her toxic past from bubbling up to the surface, and that's exactly what happened after 18 years of marriage to Dave. The red flags were abundant throughout the relationship. From the courtship, the happy times, the struggles, the birth of their two kids, hindsight would later shine a light on issues that Dave, at the time, would gladly look past or sweep under the rug. I'll deal with that later, or that's not that big of a deal, he would tell himself throughout their marriage. Eventually, the red flags piled up to the point of no return. Even with the obvious staring him in the face, it took his wife to finally pull the trigger and end the marriage. After the fog of the infidelity and divorce had cleared, Dave could finally start to see things clearly. All of the signs were there for years. Dave it's almost like she was trying to end the marriage for years and years, but I was too stupid to take all the hints. Me. That's a pretty good summation of things, I would say. Dave. Well, that's what I don't understand. Why didn't she just come out and tell me that what she was feeling? Why drag it on for so long and just end up cheating and ruining our family? Why not just be an adult and tell me that she was so unhappy? Me. Because that's not how broken people work. Dave is working under a common and misguided notion about people and relationships in general. He feels that he has the tools needed to navigate a relationship successfully, and therefore, the woman that he picked as a partner should naturally also have the same tools in her mental toolbox. He fell in love with her, he provided for her, raised a family with her, made the relationship last almost two decades, therefore, she's obviously a great match for him, and consequently, a great person to be in a lifelong relationship with, right? Dave's judgment was more than a little off. Dave, like a lot of men, was led to believe that women just don't do things like cheating on their spouses, at least not to the degree and frequency that men do. Women are the fairer sex, after all. They're the delicate ones. They are, in general, more empathetic and thoughtful when it comes to relationships, right? Us men, we're the clumsy but dangerous bull in the relationship china shop. We try to do our best, but every time we make a move, we cause another disaster. You just need a woman in your life, we are told by our loved ones. Dave himself was always reminded by everyone in his family just how great Maggie was for him. We're so glad you settled down and found such a great girl. As the nature of the universe dictates, for every up there is a down, for every plus there is a minus. For every dangerous oaf of a man, there is a soft and kind woman that is needed to tame him and keep him in line. With this common and covertly sexist mindset in place, it's no wonder that men like Dave feel extremely lucky to have any woman in their life. It's no wonder that he overlooked red flags that everyone outside of his family saw so clearly. The overall frame of his relationship didn't allow him to see red flags. Hell, the concept of red flags didn't even exist in his mind. Maggie was his wife. He was loyal. Beyond loyal. He just needed to be quiet, suck it up, and play the part of the partner and provider. 
for better or for worse. 